good to be back with you again this afternoon um, to finish our session for um, leading the first and second graders in Vacation Bible School. I'm just going to go over the daily lesson um, outline, uh, go over some of the projects, the little um, extra activities that the kids do, and just maybe give you a few pointers that I've come across as I began to work through this literature. Um, the first thing we need to make sure that we know and that we have is what we need to do our job, the right kind of equipment. The first thing we got to make sure we have is the book, the leader's guide. This has got everything to show us the daily plan and what we need to use every day in our classroom. And to go right along with that, we need to make sure that we have the leader's packet. The leader's packet's going to have things in it like this poster here that we'll use every day for our focal wall. All the pictures, the Bible verse, all the activities that you need to copy in and print out for all your kids. Those are all going to be found in your leader's pack. So it's important that you have those two things for sure in every class. And then an additional thing if you want it would be the, the kids activity book. Um, and this is just something that they can use in order to um, tie it in to the limit time if you want to do that. So those are the things that you need to have. So let's begin and let's take a look at every day and think about what um, our plan would look like in our construction site this summer. Um, the first day we're going to uh, talk about the foundation of love. And as your kids are walking in that first day, that's always an exciting day because you get to meet them for the first time. Um, there's a lot of commotion usually on that first day. And I think I mentioned this in my earlier session, but try to get somebody else that's responsible for taking your role, that type of thing during this time. It, because you need as a director and as teachers, you all need to be there to greet those kids and show the excitement, introduce them to all the decorations in your room and what's taking place. But as they come in the door that first day, they're gonna be given, given a little card that has a tool on it. And there are, I think, four of each one of these tools in your packet. So you may need to copy more if you anticipate having more kids. And each um, child is given a diff different tool. And then they're supposed to go around the room and find the other three tools that match up to the one that they have and form a team. And in that team, they get to know each other a little bit better. Some of them will go to church together, but some of them may be there for the first time. And this is a neat way to kind of draw them in. Also, if you plan on having um, your classroom divided up into smaller groups with a teacher maybe leading each group, a teacher could have the card of a specific tool and she can help find those other three that match up her card and then that becomes the small group that she works with for the rest of the week. But the important thing is just beginning to get acquainted with them. And um, so, and during the week, we're going to talk about some specific tools that are required for each um, each day that a, a construction worker would have um, when they go to a construction site. It's going to be different for different uh, responsibilities on a construction site. But our responsibility this week is to share the Bible story during the Learn It time. And so they are suggesting that we use a tool belt. This is the one from Concrete and Cranes um, from Lifeway. Um, but you know, they have them at Lowe's and Home Depot, and I think they're maybe a couple of dollars. But this, this tool belt is going to be used every day in your live it time to start in your, excuse me, your learn it time to start um, your, your Bible study time with the kids. So the first day, the tool that you're going to pull out of that tool belt is the Bible. Um, for the kids to understand the most important thing that they can have over anything else is to have God's Word and to learn to rely on God's Word. And, and, and that throughout the week, as we meet together every day, we're going to use that Bible uh, to learn more about Jesus. In today's story, Matthew, um, Jesus called Matthew, um, the tax collector, to follow him. Matthew left everything behind and he followed Jesus. And then he had a banquet and he had um, Jesus' disciples came, the Pharisees were there, and they were grumbling and complaining because Jesus was eating with tax players and tax collectors and sinners. And Jesus told the Pharisees that he had come not for the righteous, but for sinners. And so that the point for today's um, Learn It time, our Bible story, is for the kids to discover that Jesus chooses to love me. I can't earn it. Jesus chooses to me to love me. I can't earn it. 
And so the tool that we're going to add today um, to our focal wall is going to be the foundation of love. And this is our, our poster that's going to be up. And each day there's a different part, mine are already stuck on, that, that you will add. And so we're adding the foundation of love. The fact that Jesus chooses to love us, we can't earn it. And every day there's going to be a different way for you to uh, work on the kids learning their Bible verse for the for the week, Philippians 1, 6. On the first day, they're um, suggesting that you just um, have the words all printed out on uh, individual words on pieces of paper and then spread them out on the floor, have rulers, tape measures, things like that, and let the kids just measure the the length of each one of those words. It kind of, it's just the concept of being on a construction site and using those tools. Um, just a heads up, there's going to be several times that you use the words of for your verse so you might want to um, be aware of that and as you're making um, your, your copies of that makes two or three extra ones so we introduce it to them by measuring it for the, for the first time um, the kids were um, once they've had the, le the learn it time and you've uh, given them the story about Matthew and began to talk about love and, and what that means that Jesus loves us he chooses to love us so we can't earn it then today we're going to talk about, we're, they're going to play a game in the live it time. And remember, this is when they do the application, when they figure out how that story relates specifically to them. And they're going to think about um, choices that they have to make. And you could use a caution tape down the middle. And, and as they make a choice, they're going to talk, think about whether um, they want to, whether it be a good choice or a bad choice and go on one side or the other. For example, do you want to be rude or do you want to be kind? Do you want to be caring or do you want to be cruel? Unlike making some of the choices that our kids are going to have to make, they don't have to make a choice about, what, about Jesus' love. They cannot earn the love of Jesus. He's already chosen to love him, to love them. They'll just have to choose when to invite him into their heart. But his love is always there for them. And then at, at this limit time, this would also be a time that you could use an activity out of your um, pupil's book if you choose to use a pupil's book. And then we know that there are four additional activities that we can do at whatever time fits into our schedule of things that uh, we can do with the kids to reinforce the point. And so the first um, two are application activities. And um, the first one is cute. It's a ring toss. And I noticed my ring already kind of fell down there. But uh, you have cones and then you have like diving rings. And um, the cones are set up and you have a... a it's a, a game with two teams, divide up your, your kids, and they're going to toss that, that ring towards that cone. If they get that ring on top of the cone, then they earn a letter. They're attempting to earn the letters to the word love. And so they get it on there, you give them the L, and you, the next team does it, they miss it. Well, they don't get the L. You might need three or four teams, however many you need for your kids. But you continue to play that game, and as they earn by getting the ring on there, that letter, they're given that letter. And then all, somebody wins. Somebody gets all four. And the other two or three teams, they don't have all four. And then you say, okay, team number two, here's VE. That's what you still need. Team number three, you just needed an E. Team number four, oh, you didn't do too good. You need OBE. So here are these. What did you do? Those first kids earned the letters love. They earned it by getting it right and getting that ring on there. The other ones tried. They tried really hard, but their rings didn't go on. But when you stopped that game, you gave them all the letters to love. Now, you might want to talk with the kids about how they feel about that. Did they think that was fair, unfair? You know, what, what were some of the emotions that they were feeling? The point you're trying to make with this fun game is that they cannot earn Jesus' love. They can't get that ring on there every time just to earn his love. They, he gives it to us. He, he, he gives it to us. We don't have to earn it. And so just like you gave them all the letters to complete the word love, Jesus chooses to love us. 
The second one um, is a straight line art, and this is the one here with Shelby on it. And at the top of the little sign, the kids will write, Jesus chooses to love. In the middle, you leave a blank spot, and on the bottom, I can't earn it. And then in the middle, um, they want you to have the children write their names in straight line. Um, using rulers if, if you need to, or maybe they, they can just already do it by hand, um, but they want it to be straight. Now, Shelby, S normally would have been curved, so a first grader may have to think a little bit harder. How do I make that S without curving it like I've been taught? The idea is they're making straight lines. They're trying really hard to do it perfectly, but the signs that reminds them that no matter how hard this was and some letters weren't real easy to do, we need to always remember that Jesus chooses to love Shelby. She can't earn it. Um, the Bible skills for the day was really a, a cute activity. Um, using cups, you make them um, into cones by using orange tape or markers. Um, they, they tell you to, um, to look for orange cups and I've looked and looked and looked, and I finally just went with these little white um, cups to make it easy to display and put my orange stripes on with an orange marker. And lo and behold, yesterday, um, when I was running into to Dollar General to get a couple of things I needed um, while my time for my time in quarantine, they had a package of orange cups. I had seen them earlier in at Walmart, but they were in a package that was mixed with three or four other colors that we don't need. So I just ch chose to do it with white. You can do it what, however, but it's just the idea that it looks like a cone. And on those cups, um, you're going to write the first uh, four books of the New Testament and the first five books of the Old Testament, and then new and old on those cups. Mix up those cups, jumble them up, and this is the day that you begin in your Bible skills to start talking to the kids about there being two different divisions in the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament. And there's books that belong in each one of them. And, and these uh, first books of the of the New Testament or Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Let's see if we can put them in order how they go. Let's see if we can push, put the first five books of the Old Testament in order. Um, just a neat way for them to start to begin to recognize those just nine nine books to begin with it, as they start their week. Um, the bonus verse uh, for the day is John 15, 9. And um, they want you to put a caution tape down the middle. And the kids are going to talk about whether they like something or they love something. And if they like it, they'll step across. They'll be on by the caution tape. They'll step across to the like side, go back to the caution tape. And if they love it, they step over to the love it side. It's going to vary with each child. Um, and so you're going to start naming awesome things. Do you love or do you like pizza? Do you love or you like snow? Do you love or do you like ice cream? Do you love or do you like chocolate? Just things that the kids think about. You know, there's a lot of things that we like, but there's only certain things that we really love. Things that are just better than anything else. For me, I'd rather have chocolate than peanut butter anytime. I have a nephew that would rather have peanut butter than chocolate. Ew, what's wrong with him? But, you know, God, Jesus' love um, is, is, is something that we should always have on that love side. The amount of love we have for something doesn't compare to the amount of love that Jesus has for each one of us. And we can't earn it. So that first day... Don't forget that we have the first foundation, which the, is the foundation of love. And, and quickly moving on to day number two, um, on this this is the foundation of forgiveness. And on this first on this uh, day, when the kids come into your room, you've got popsicle um, sticks. Um, well, the craft sticks, the wider ones, and and pom poms, and they're going to take a popsicle stick, a craft stick, and balance it on their finger. And they're going to put um, those pom-poms on there and try to walk and balance 
that craft stick, kind of like a crane does. It has to be, the weight has to be distributed just right for that crane to really balance and be doing its most effective job. This is just fun. Just another thing about uh, being on a, on a construction site that the kids can do. And uh, maybe you want to have a little relay, a little race going from one place to another. Maybe you want to work, well, work as pairs and one of you do it and then the next of you, next one of you try to, you know, add the pom-poms to make it work. Um, and after you do that, then, you know, just bring them back again to your, um, learn, uh, the area where you're going to be learning their Bible story every day and bring them, um, to that area to, um, hear the story for the day. And today's tool that we're going to have in our tool bag is a flashlight. It's a flash, <coughs> excuse me, the story um, for, for today is um, the story about when um, Paul was on the road to Damascus and he was blinded by a bright light and um, Paul, Jesus, you know, extended a call to him. Um, Paul obeyed Jesus's command. And then he went and told everyone, he went and told everybody that Jesus is the Messiah. And so we're going to talk about, Paul wasn't necessarily a, a, a good guy uh, when he started. Um, he, he'd been doing some things that weren't quite right and, and were things that really um, made people not like him and just made him not a good guy. But you know, Jesus, that bright light shone on him and Jesus made a call on his life and he changed and he was forgiven. And so our second um, foundation is forgiveness. Um, and what they suggest that you do with that flashlight is as you're telling the story, when the kids hear the word bright light shown, then they just, they do something to just get your attention. And, and you're supposed to turn on that light and just in that story say it was, you know, it was dramatic. Something major happened. A bright light shone and Paul's life was changed. And so this is, this would be a fun way of sharing the story if it's not too distracting. Um, the verse for the day are put on planks of wood. Basically, each um, uh, each word of the verse, I don't know why that's always hard for me to say, each word of the verse is written on a craft stick. And then those uh, uh, sticks are tumbled on the floor and they sit down and they put that verse together. Um, depending on the size of the kids you have, you want everybody to be able to participate. So make several sets. Craft sticks are cheap, a marker is cheap. Make several sets and just spread your kids out. And even if it's just three or four working together, they're going to learn those words a little bit um, easier and, and they're going to remember them because they worked hard. They didn't just watch somebody else do it. Then in the live at time, um, the kids' um, activity in the pupils' book is a picture of what they call oops. Some things that happen on a construction site that went wrong. They um, didn't balance things right on the crane and it just kept going and going. Um, the dump truck dumped in the wrong spot and knocked over a wall that was already built. There's there's a couple of pictures in there. And I told you early on that um, if you don't want to purchase the, the learner's book, you can come up with ideas of your own. And this is one that would be super easy. Just come up with some pictures of uh, oopses on a construction site. And as I was looking for those um, a couple of days ago, it was um, when I Googled that, pulled that up, there were pictures of accidents, things that were happening to people on those construction sites. And I would suggest that you stay away from that. But there was ones where, you know, kind of a cartoonish figure and he dropped the hammer and it shows him holding his toe or um, stepping on a tack and, and picking up that foot. So look for something like that, oops, that happened on a construction site. And then there's a box left, a blank square left. And in that square, they're supposed to write an oops that has happened to them, a time when they messed up, when something w went wrong. And this is just a, a neat time for you to then go be able to talk with those kids about, you know, we're all just like Paul, we mess up and we do things wrong, but aren't we glad that Jesus offers us forgiveness and he offers us that foundation to build upon. Um, I think this would be a really fun activity to do with your kids. And so then let's look at the additional activities that we have for that day. The first one is called Smash the Sin. 
And you know, um, when I've done these classes uh, in the years past, I'm always um, quick to tell you things I think are good or bad that will work or not work. And this is one of those that I had some question about. Um, the idea that they suggest in the book is that you get styrofoam cups and you give them um, to each one of the kids and you have them write on that styrofoam cup a sin, something that they did wrong. For instance, this said fight, uh, disobey my parents. Uh, lie, steal, things like that. They write a sin, something that they've done wrong on that cup. And then together, either with a hammer or with their foot, they stomp that sin. They smash that sin right out of there. Well, my first thought is my custodians are not going to be happy with us doing that in our classroom. Styrofoam goes everywhere in tiny pieces. Sure, it's a neat concept, but what a mess we're going to have. You can do the same thing with paper cups. They make white paper cups. They make color paper cups. You could do that same concept. I like the idea of I'm smashing out that sin, but I think it would be wise to maybe make a different choice of the type of cup that you use. And um, the second application activity is we've got some words and they're just this, just, once again, some more like uh, sins, disobey, lie, cheat, um, steal. And those words are placed into a uh, container with sand over it. And the kids are supposed to search through that sand until they uncover that, that word that's hidden in there. And then they talk about what is it to steal? What is it to lie? They talk about the sin that's under there. And then after they found all of them and you've still got that sand in there, you've pulled out all those sins, then you let them take their finger and make a heart in the middle of that sand to help them understand these things are bad. These are things that we should not be doing. But you know, there's somebody that wipes away all those sins and forgives us and gives us the love that we need and that's Jesus. And so that's, I think that's a really fun, cute one that we can do. Um, the Bible skills for uh, day two is to sort the washers. And they said to find and get um, some large washers. Thought I'd had some out in the garage, but I didn't. So I'm just going to tell you about this one. And on those washers, um, you write uh, the first eight books of the New Testament. And you're going to talk about um, the divisions of the New Testament Those and how, how in those eight books, they're divided. And they're divided into the Gospels and the history and the letters. And so you put the name of the verses, um, the uh, books of the Bible on those washers. And then you lay the washers out and you have those divisions. And the kids sort the washers and put them where they belong. Matthew doesn't belong over in the history. Matthew belongs in the Gospel. So you're teaching them just a little bit about how those um, books lay out in the New Testament. Something real easy that you could do. You could also do it with a picture of a washer um, if you couldn't uh, find the washers in the store. The bonus verse for that for day two is really a cute one. Uh, the verse is Romans 5, 8, and you write the, the words to that verse on um, pieces of cardboard, and you put it inside a little oatmeal can. And this oatmeal can is gonna become your cement mixer. And so you put your kids in a circle and you roll that mixer, turn it over like you would see a cement truck doing, and you roll that mixer to the next child and they open it up and they pull out a card and they shut it back up and they roll it to another child and they pull out one and they shut it, shut it back up and keep rolling until you get them all pulled out and then Go, you work together to put together the words of Romans um, 5 8. This would be fun. This would be something that the kids enjoy doing. And then at the end, and I think I forgot to tell you this yesterday, but that for yesterday's uh, story, that would be the time that you would um, give them their tag to go in their carabiner if you choose to use it. So today, they would get the tag that says, Forgiveness, Jesus loves me regardless of my sin. So we've made it to day number two. Let's look at day number three. On day number three, um, our uh, foundation is the foundation of worth. And um, 
when you go to a, a construction site, there's always some things that um, you need to be aware of for safety reasons. And so we've got a, a safety uh, list, safety first checklist of things we're gonna read to the kids. And we want them to give us a thumbs up if they think, yes, that is definitely something that has to happen. Nah, that's not important. That's not anything we need to worry about. So here's some of the, some of the ones on here. We always wear a hard hat in a construction zone. Well, of course. Protective gloves do not have to be worn in a construction zone. Yeah, did you hear what that said? Do not, so that's not a yes, it's a no. They do not have to be worn. How about flip-flops are good shoes to wear on a construction site? Well, no, silly Miss Kim, you know better than that. So these are just some things that, that you're gonna read to them that help them think about what happens actually on a construction site um, for safety purposes. Um, and that leads us into the the, sec the third one, which is on our construction site, um, we've talked about love, we've talked about forgiveness, and today we're gonna to talk about our worth. We're gonna talk about some protection that we will have. And on um, the story uh, in our Learn It Time for day number three, um, the piece of equipment that's going to come out of your toolkit is a whistle. And in a construction site, pe the, the people that work there, um, especially the ones that are in charge, will have a whistle. And they use that whistle to warn people of danger or, you know, the cranes crossing across and you need to be aware that it's moving towards you. Um, and it's an important piece of equipment that you wouldn't think about would be needed on a construction site. And so um, the way it's suggested in our book is as we tell the story, um, every time um, you hear the word awake, which is mentioned several times, the kids raise their hand and you're supposed to blow that whistle. Stop, you know, say the word awake, they raise their hand and you blow that whistle. And then Keep on going with the story next time. But, but it was, I don't like those kind of activities personally just because to me that distracts from the story. I like the concept and I would tell them to begin with, I, I have a word I want you to listen for all the way through this story as I'm telling it to you. I want you to listen to the word awake. And in a little bit, we're gonna find out why that was a very important word and why it was a word that we should have been listening for. And so today our story is um, found in Matthew. Um, it's a story about the last night that Jesus spent with his disciples. And he went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray and he asked his disciples to remain awake and to pray while he went further into the garden. And Jesus knew he was going to die on the cross, and he was distressed, um, and, and he went to the garden to pray, and he asked his disciples to stay awake. Our story is longer than that, but in several times the word awake is mentioned. Uh, but Jesus knew that it was his time to, uh, to follow through with the plan that God had. And so we're going to talk about the fact to, of today's point that Jesus chose to die for me. So you, you've told that story, and then you say, you know that whistle? indicated something that was very important. And so throughout the story, you heard me say the word awake and blow that whistle loud. You know, Jesus asked those disciples to stay awake. He was agonizing over something that he was going to have to go through. And, and he wanted his disciples to stay awake and pray and they couldn't. But you know, no, no matter whether they did or didn't, he still had a purpose to fulfill, and he still did fulfill that purpose. He chose to die for me. The um, verse activity for the day is a really cute one. Once again, uh, the words to the verse are on cards, and on the other side of the room are pieces of safety equipment, and they start um, with the, the side that has the equipment. They put on the hard hat, and they go to the other end, and they pick a card, and they bring it back to the pile, and then they the next person puts on the next piece of equipment and they go down and get a card and do this until all the cards are got and brought back to the group and they begin to start putting those together. You don't have to wait till the end as a few words are coming. They can begin to lay out that verse and put it in an order, have a re relay, a competition with, between the other group. This would be a fun thing. Easy, cute. You have vests around, hard hats around, goggles, gloves, um, just a fun way that they can all learn that verse for the day. On the limit for um, day three, the activity in the book is a um, 
where you color in squares and start colors or color by number almost but when you get through coloring what comes out what stands out is a cross and that would be an easy thing for us to duplicate in any way you could go on pinterest and find a coloring sheet that has a cross and and they just color that because it's just for them to understand that jesus chose to die for us and and to point them to the cross with that activity on the additional activities for the day um, the first one is remember that first day we had these little tools that we used and so on day number three um, you're gonna put the hard hat on a child without the tag and then without them seeing you stick that hard that tag on the front of that hard hat and then then they, they've got it on and they don't know what it is but they're gonna guess by what the kids have to say and so they're not gonna make the motion necessarily they're gonna say bang 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 that's what you do with the hammer bang 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 loud noise confusion they're gonna go to the drill Vroom, vroom, vroom. You know, it's it's not acting it out. It's acting and saying it out, saying it loud so that God can figure out what, what tool that they're wearing. It's going to be loud. It's going to be noisy. What you're going to get to in the point of that is, you know, Jesus hears all of us all the time. At the same time, many of us praying, talking with him, listening to him. And isn't it neat that it's not that noisy? that Jesus hears every one of us when we talk to him and we can pray even at the same time and Jesus will always hear us. I think that's a really cute one, one that I think the kids would enjoy. The second one is for them to just make ID badges. This is in your book, um, in your kit, so that you can copy them off um, and be able to make a badge. It has a place where you can put a hole in it, add, add a, a lanyard if you have some extra ones lying around, uh, just some type of a little tag they can stick it on their backpack, but they just put their name on it and it's really neat. This, this gives me an opportunity to tell you something that I told you in the first video. We have a lot of stuff this year that is black and gray, and um, it does not copy really well. So when you get ready to make things like this, run a copy through your copier um, and, and look at it and make sure it looks the way you want it to look before you push 25. Um, because it sometimes it's just blurry because it's black and white. And sometimes you'll have to push the color um, in or push it at, run it through as a color instead of a black and white in order to make it work. The Bible skills activity for the day is really a cute one also. Um, it, ha it calls for us using a vest, and you can make vests. This was just an orange um, grocery sack um, uh, bag like you can get in some of the stores, and there's a pattern on Mr. Mark's classroom for making these. You could use any type of vest, but you have a vest that is for the Old Testament and a vest that's for the New Testament, and then you have just random books of the Bible written on sticky notes and you have those vests and the kids are supposed to decide well is John in the New Testament is it going the New Testament vest or does it go over here on the Old Testament how about judges where does judges go and they're just randomly putting those books of the Bible in the division where they go um, one thing that I haven't mentioned earlier that I, I meant to mention was some years we have a really good poster that has the books of the Bible in it for us to use during our Bible skills time. This year we don't have that. So you may have that still laying around from a previous year or just maybe something that's available in your resource room. I think there's several places that have them that are not that expensive that you can get in a poster form. But that really would be something good to have for your Bible skills time because you're going to hopefully have some kiddos there that don't know how to use their Bible. They don't know that if, you know, open it up and the New Testament's in the back. You tell them to open it up to Matthew, they have no clue where Matthew is. So that would be a good resource to invest in so that you would have it for your Bible skills time. The bonus verse for um, day number three is John 15, 13. And it's, it's talking about matching our work boots. And you put each one of the words on a boot and scatter them around the room and then they try go from boot to boot it's not in an order they'll have to go over here and step on this boot and go over here and go back to over here and they're following it all the way around until they get through all the words of, of john 15 13 and then they take them and they put them all together um 
If you haven't the room in your uh, the space in your room to do that, that's great. If not, put them on. Put those words on uh, boots and just give them to groups and let them put that that verse together. It's just something again, another verse that they'll learn for the week that's important for them. Um, and then we finish out that day. And on that day, we're talking about our worth, our promise of a worth, our foundation of worth, and that is Jesus chooses. Jesus chose to die for me, and that shows how worthy I am.